be here with you all uh, in the 22nd International Sustainability Conference of the West uh, at uh, UN Geneva. Uh, since last two days, we are talking about different uh, indicators and uh, the goals of the Sustainable Development Goals, that how we can use them, implement it, and what are the challenges that we are facing uh, in the way to bring sustainability across the globe, and specifically if you're talking about the developing world. So today's uh, session is the continuation of uh, that. And uh, I'm also talking about uh, the gender inequality, equality, and women empowerment, specifically in the context of uh, Pakistan. And uh, these findings are based on my university's uh, project that we just uh, finished recently. What if there will be no gender equality? What if there will be no gender balance? What happened in the world then? So it is uh, proven by the literature across the globe that gender equality is crucial for a peaceful, prosperous, and sustainable world. If we really want peace, if we really want sustainability across the globe, so it is important that we need to focus on the important key stakeholders that the world is comprising of. Mm -hmm. So, and Pakistan has no exception. However, it is going uh, to be, uh, come up with so many efforts to bring at least half of the uh, nations, uh, the, the people that comprising of the women in Pakistan to, to bring them come forward. And uh, the struggles are going on, but still there is a huge gap there. And we need to emphasize that. If I just look at to, into the background of the UN efforts so far has been done until now, to, to focus on the women's issue. So we are having uh, the commission on the status of women in back, uh, back into 1946, adoption of the CEDA in uh, 79, Beijing declaration in uh, 95, uh, UN women established back in 2010, uh, he for she campaign in 2014. And uh, uh, last, uh, latestly we come up with the UN uh, SGDs uh, initiatives of 2015. <clears throat> There are so many challenges they have uh, come up, but as well as there is the progress because of these initiatives of the UN. Now we can see that there are so many uh, women protected laws are there in different countries uh, in the world uh, for the protection of the women rights, sending of the girls to the schools and uh, bringing women into the labor market, but still persistent gender gaps in the economic participation and opportunity is there. And today's uh, my presentation is emphasizing on some of the major key indicators of the SDG 5, <clears throat> that is 5.4, uh, 5.5, 5A and B that is related to if you are talking about the women empowerment, if you want to bring women into the mainstream. So we should recognize and acknowledge the value of their unpaid work. We should bring them and ensure their full and effective participation, uh, the economic participation. And the ICT integration is a new innovation and playing a very effective role that how we it is going to facilitate the women specifically in the Pakistani context. So equal rights to economic resources, ownership and financial services. These are the few of the indicators, the few of the uh, key variables that we can say can help a lot to change the women's situation across the globe, any, anywhere. I'm not specifically talking about the developing world or of the Pakistan, but anywhere they can play an important role. So the data was gathered from <clears throat> the women entrepreneurs uh, in Pakistan. However, if I just share the findings of uh, these women uh, demographics, so uh, it's quite uh, giving a very pleasant picture because most of uh, the women were uh, having the ownership of the land. Most of them were having access to online resources. They are uh, more than half of the respondents were having uh, the opportunity to, to come up with the online businesses and all these things, but uh, it is not, uh, the story of the whole country. So um, if I just summarize here that when we are talking about the recognition of uh, the value or uh, the unpaid uh, care and the domestic work, so we can say that it can be troublesome if <clears throat> uh, it is difficult to access, invisible, 
or characterized by a lot of caregiving uh, duties. Same way, such sort of obligations constrain women to low skill, irregular, and some sort of an informal jobs, which is going to, to, to violate their rights of career. Because when women are uh, having a strong background uh, uh, in terms of finances, so it is typically, uh, we have seen that they are going to utilize their income on the family, uh, on the family members, food, their health, their education, and all these things. But if the women will be disproportionately vulnerable to poverty, it will directly, uh, like uh, we can say, that impedes the advancement of the gender equality. And in return, uh, we can talk of uh, the sustainable development or we can talk of uh, the women empowerment in the country. So no doubt their uh, limitation uh, in the workforce uh, will uh, impact their economic growth, poverty alleviation, and overall production of the society. The same way, if I just share with you the current situation, or what's been going on in the Pakistan, because when we are talking about the value of the unpaid work and all these things, so uh, it is just including like uh, uh, giving care to the children, to the elderly people, uh, preparing the meal, uh, fetching the water, collection of two uh, woods and all these activities. And it is uh, the, the literature and the study finding shows that almost eight to 11 hours of a day uh, can be uh, consumed by the women's energy and they are going to consume the women's energy into such sort of work that which is not recognized, which is not get uh, recognition and value from the there's the, the family from the community and as well as overall in the national, if we look at to the scenario. So uh, into the political participation, only 20% of the women are having some mere visibility uh, in the leadership position. If I just shared the scenario of the Pakistan, so hardly 5% of uh, the women are having senior management positions less than 2% having uh, access to the ownership of the uh, inheritance over there, and uh, hardly like 21% of the women are having access to the financial resources. That shows like uh, there is a very less number of women over there who are having even at least the bank accounts. So the same way if you're talking about the ICT usage, 21% as compared to 43% of the men. And uh, if you are talking about the solutions, so we need to train them, it's really somewhere at the bottom if they are getting such sort of treatment. So with all these variables, this study uh, has shows a very strong correlation that all of these indicators can play an important role to bring women empowerment and in return sustainable development to the society. And the indicators and the prediction as well as uh, the, the multi-regression analysis we run on that and that predicted that if we will not be emphasizing on such sort of indicators, so might be, we can never uh, like uh, dream of this thing that uh, might be the 2030 agenda is not that much uh, uh, on the way, but might be till 2040 or 50, we might be able to bring women into the mainstream. So it is very much important when we are talking about uh, all these indicators, there are few of the things that very much important uh, need to be focused. One is the ownership, uh, because no doubt the women are into the active economy, but because of the high level of expenses, um, the not availability or not access to the credit schemes or, or such sort of uh, facilitation uh, of the financial resources and the services, they are somewhere into the economy that they are performing some role, but they are not able to save such sort of savings so that can come up with the ownership of those companies or the enterprise or something like that. So in the Pakistani context, the family plays a very important role to give a backup to the women to come into uh, uh, to come forward uh, and start to take up their own businesses. Because if uh, that support would not be there, uh, specifically for the young women, it is quite difficult to come up with the, their own, uh, like to be independent and to be entrepreneur, 
or uh, to start a business uh, just because of the low status of the women because when you are not having uh, something uh, not getting something from the inheritance you will be having low rates in the education you have low access to uh, information communication technology so all these indicators contribute to the overall status of the women so if it will be low it will be not recognized so then it will be difficult for them to start in such a scenario the business of their own so uh, the study find a very interesting correlation between the ICT integration into the businesses. Uh, in the last almost eight to 10 years, we are uh, observing this phenomena in the Pakistan and the study findings also support that, that almost more than half of the respondents were doing their online business. Just keeping in view the cultural context of the different uh, regions of the world, it is not uh, appropriate in the Pakistani context for a woman to have all the responsibilities of the families at one side and go out to the market and do the business and all these things successfully in the male dominated uh, uh, market space. So this ICT integration, the skill and the knowledge is enabling them that even then if they are coming up with all of their domestic responsibilities, they can they can be financially recognized, they can do their work from home. And just by utilizing this ICT uh, different tools like of the internet or just you have a website, so where you can promote, advertise uh, your work or something like that and get the business in return. So there are certain limitations, but with the help of such sort of uh, support system, like of the family, like of the integration of the ICT, giving them the equal rights and opportunities to towards the economic resources and uh, the services specifically. So there are certain suggestions uh, because this is just, I'm concluding that, that how these are interrelated. If we will be coming up with enhancing access to the finances in terms of the uh, giving them the microfinance and small business loans, making the credit uh, guarantee schemes for them, improving the their access to the market uh, in form of like uh, having the business incubators, uh, export promotions, giving a strengthened legal and regulatory support to them, make simplifies the business registration for them. And most importantly, their capacity building specifically in the, uh, in, in the financial domain for the women just give them the entrepreneurial education, mentorship, and provide the platform of the networking so where they can exhibit themselves and to get uh, like, you know, the ideas from the others as well and have a, a strong network. Along with that, the uh, enhancing uh, technological access as uh, the study proved as well, uh, the digital literacy is very much important because luckily all the study uh, respondents of uh, this project were at least the graduate or the postgraduate women. But it, uh, the, the, four, uh, the whole Pakistan, the scenario is not like that. So by creating the supportive ecosystem like the child care, the family support services or the public awareness campaigns can be put a very strong dent into that. And continuously keep going on with the literature and with the research in certain domains so that you can come up uh, with the idea to, to for the policymakers that where we are standing and where we have to go, what are the challenges in the economic and financial domain the women are facing and what the solution we can offer to overcome such sort of barriers to, to make them strengthen because Pakistan's uh, population, half of Pakistan's population, and as Mam said, that almost half of the world's population is comprising of women. And unless or until, if you not make them skilled, if you not bring them into the mainstream, uh, acknowledgeable financial mainstream. So uh, I think talking of the sustainable development, talking of the development and talking of the equality and all these things will just be, remain a dream. So with all this, thank you so much.